exercise bad because it's 2 a.m. in Moscow, yet still <laughs> I survived to listen to my friend Aunt Joan from Long Island. And uh, I, I, I also hire Matthias because I go and actually switch my camera off and just listen to it because I want to lay in my bed with my hands closed, with my <laughs> eyes closed. So today, it's, this special TV podcast is about the stuff that we survived for the last year that caused mm. a lot of problems and a lot of negativity and a lot of lockdowns and a lot of uncertainty still. And and Joan have a background uh, dealing with the uh, health issues. So she going to share her ideas or I guess her vision about how we should have been doing it and what can be done today and whatever. And with that, I introduce to you Joan Shields. Hello. Let's do it. Hello. Well, the funny part well, is, the funny part is, it seems that there's been so, there's so many discrepancies, discrepancies in the way they handled the it, way from they the it from the beginning. There's a lot of public there's trust lot that's, lot of public that's, trust been, that's shattered. been shattered. And I will not and be I one of those people pointing those fingers. Point you're anti-science or whatnot. The public has every reason not to trust what's coming out. Because mm. they didn't follow the policies that we had in place that our taxpayer money paid for. And I thought the response was a black swan. And I realized I was wrong because we're not good at health care here. We're not good at prevention. We're very good at using vaccines, which is great. Which is when you have them, but when what happens them, when a novel disease when comes, novel by, disease comes by, and by and there is no vaccine? And what we need, yeah. to, do, what we need to do, and what we have, what spent, we have spent billions, spent billions on, on studying, studying and implementing later, implementing later just, was not done. just was not done. And and I can only go from my experience. From I was working the front lines when HIV, HIV came. came. And, the and the government as actually didn't as really, actually mention, didn't it really mention it too much. So we as healthcare, healthcare workers, workers were told, were told crazy things. We didn't even know what to trust. But basically trust, that, that HIV, HIV, which actually wasn't, actually even, named wasn't even named yet. We had AIDS first. We knew it was AIDS. But we didn't wow. know we didn't what it know was that we were dealing with, we were dealing with except, maybe, except body maybe body fluids. So imagine so me. I happened to, to be working in a New York City, New York trauma, York City trauma, trauma, center trauma center that they designated, that they designated to be, to be a, uh, an, aid a, center. Uh, an aid center. And we had and many patients had that many had patients drug IV. Drug, drug abuse, IV, IV, drug drug abuse, IV drug abusers, hepatitis, tuberculosis, hepatitis, tuberculosis. A lot of patients, that, of were patients that were drug abusers, abusers were coming down with this strange disease, this strange and, we disease and we didn't have the knowledge or the, the, knowledge or the background, how, background to handle it. how to handle it. And we got nothing from and the we government. Got nothing from the government. So for six months, we worked in that hospital waiting for some sort of guidance. It was the blind leading the blind. And what we learned from then, or I thought we did, is that you take precautions ASAP. You don't know what it is. This could be the contagion that kills everybody. This could be a mild contagion that does nothing. So what you do what is you do, take all the precautions and assume and the work, and then as science develops and, and, science and labs are taken, are taken and studies are made, we realize what it is we're dealing with, then we can loosen those precautions. And we did it 100% half-ass backwards. <laughs> we said it's fine. I was looking up with Dr. Fauci because I remember back then, Dr. Fauci, get ready, wrote the plan, wrote many of the uh, pandemic preparedness plans that we have worldwide. 
He's known worldwide. He is spectacularly smart. He knows infectious disease. He told us when you don't have a vaccine for something new, you need a mask. It's a respiratory disease. It doesn't matter if it's airborne or droplet right away. We got to know it's mm. a respiratory disease. Cover your mouth. You want to stay distant. You know that, um, you know, the emergency response broadcasting, the FCC, when you have that uh, monthly, ah, that, that alarm that goes on the mm -hmm. TV and the radio, that should have been implemented. And with that should have come, hey, we have a new disease. It's starting to spread. We don't know what it is. So we're going to put everybody on lockdown. And we did know at that time that there was one woman in China that had gone 42 days before, after being exposed, before she developed, at the time, coronavirus of unknown origin, but, you know, COVID. So you would want to... That's this down. recent time, COVID-19, you're saying? Yeah, it's called COVID-19 now, but when we first knew sure. what it was, it was one of the coronaviruses. It's coronavirus isn't something new. It's just new to the public and that's fine. Now everybody learns these things and that's fine. And then they realized, well, it really was developed or exposed in 19. So it's COVID-19 because it was 2019. Okay. So I know for me, from my own experience that I was watching Insta stories and I was seeing on Instagram, I could see um, Chinese citizens were uploading personal videos, horrors of Chinese hospitals, bodies in a room, just bodies, and nurses crying their eyes out, and doctors crying their eyes out. It's, it's, it gets me upset. So we knew it was happening, and at that very moment, the whole world should have been stopped. We have a problem. We need to initiate this, and everybody go on lockdown for six weeks. That's how you do it. That would prevent the spread. They'll tell you we put travel bans. We did such half-assed travel bans. It's it's almost funny, except it was life-threatening. I know I got JFK down the road from me. Nine miles down the road is JFK, and I did these flights. And we had students from China down on eastern Long Island going to Stony Brook. They were placed on self-quarantine, kind of like the honor system. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's not how it works. You hope to God they don't have it, but some did and some spread it because they did not maintain self-quarantine. So what yeah, you do yeah. is immediately, it's the worst thing. You panic terribly right away and assume it's the worst. And then praise God, it's not as bad, but we made it worse. Absolutely. So yeah. now I, yeah. I look at, so I looked at, um, I went back and this was January. Dr. Fauci and the coronavirus task force was put together at the end of January. And he was doing all the talk, uh, the mainstream media cable news network uh, circuits. And he's saying, is this as bad as the Spanish flu? Obvi obviously not. It could it be? Sure. It's like, there is no obviously. You don't know what it is. Um, now fast forward, now it's February. February 28th, the World Health Organi Organization released 54, 51, 50 some odd com countries are now reporting to have it. This is widespread. They didn't diagnose or uh, classify this as a pandemic till March. But on February 28th, out, I, I get all my little nursing alerts in my in emails. And we had 50 some odd uh, countries saying that they had the same virus. Put it on hold. You know what Fauci said on February 29th? Should we change our st lifestyle? No, not yet. And I'm sitting there oh, like, wow. wait, you're the dude that put these together. There's study after study. If you go to OSHA, uh, CDC, OSHA, um, Alec, is uh, our occupant occupational safety and hazard association paid by the government to make sure that work people at work are safe and protected. So OSHA, which you got to consider the healthcare workers first. The other, if we don't have them on the front lines, then who's going to care for everybody who's sick? OSHA, Department of Homeland Security, number one are them, believe it or not. Even though they only were developed after September 11th, Department of Homeland Security are the ones that had the big pandemic response plan because they know 
a biological threat and they are prepared. Our FEMA, mm. CDC, um, Health and Human Services, every one of them have pandemic response plans and preparedness plans in place. And it all says, basically, you assess and when you see it's spreading, you go on lockdown, social distancing. I bet that's a new word to most people. That word came out back in early 2000s when we put these plans together that were updated every two years. Masks, absolutely you wear a mask. It's not the end all, but it's one of the tools because we have nothing else. I remember yeah. when the, um, so on, on January 26th, Nassim, Joe, and Yania put out the paper for precautionary principle um, yeah. for this coronavirus. It was just saying exactly what the pandemic plans are. Uh, yeah, on yeah. January 30th, my nurses, National Nurses United and Global Nurses United together wrote a letter of urgency demanding the WHO follow the precautionary principle now. We need to pretend. And we don't know. And in there they put, it could be airborne. Airborne is worse because it can float in the air longer and it's smaller particles. And that we were even posting pictures of triple folding a bandana. So here mm. it is spreading away. And in February, we also sent 18 tons of PPE to China, who I got to give them credit. They're smart as hell because they're selling PPE, PPE back to us. <laughs> we donated it and now they're selling it back one way or the other. I said, what a joke. <laughs> so here is February 29th, uh, Dr. Fauci saying, do we have to change our lifestyle? No. And a month later, less than a month later, our first nurse in Elmhurst, which is, you know, in New York City, a busy hospital in, in an inner city of uh, Corona. Ironically, Corona uh, Queens is right there. And oh, okay. our first nurse died. And the nurses there were wearing, get ready, plastic bags, you know, the big hefty black garbage bags that you, they cut a hole because they didn't have PPE. And this guy, it was a male nurse, he died first. And I sit there and I wonder, how, what the hell were they thinking? Back in 2014, we had Ebola hit U.S. shores. And it sounds so silly. I'm nobody. 